I don't, I've not heard the, where I've seen the also go down into the back. Everybody. He's in this kind of a situation around the tennis court or something. And it's almost predictable. Right. And the calls are so distinct. What these bats do is they're flying along. As they produce one call and the next call is slightly lower in frequency. So they're going beep, 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 beep as they're going along. And then if I'm right about them foraging, we'll see some feeding houses where they're attacking insects, which we didn't see any of around St. Paul Cave. So that's what I expect's happening. And of course, the great thing about the bat's echolocation and the microphone is it allows us to monitor bat activity in a situation where we're unlikely to capture them. I mean, the only way to capture them would be with something like the shotgun, which is fairly destructive. So, yeah. Well, one thing we're, we're often asked is, is uh, how do these people get the bats out of their attics and, and out of their rooms? I, I, I know you can put in like uh, the, uh, the swinging one-way doors yeah. them and they can't get yeah. back in. Um, but other than that, because in a lot of cases, it's going to be hard for these people to seal up their places entirely. Is the way to, to just discourage them from being in there? Um, I don't. When it comes to bat proofing, the only way to solve the problem is to keep them from getting in. And usually bats get in where the roof joins the walls. And a bat proof valve is much easier than what you're describing. It's just to hang some of the kind of netting they sell in garden centers to for people to grow their plants on. Okay, it doesn't have to be. And if it hangs down about a meter and a half below the edge of the eaves and you just put it up with a staple gun, the bats leave. They go out under the netting, but when they come back, they try to fly right back to where the entrance was. But they can't get through the entrance because the netting is in the way. Now, the only time not to use that is if it's a maternity colony and there's a bunch of baby bats that are still nursing inside the colony because then the mothers will be more determined to get in. And if they don't, you just have a bunch of dead baby bats in the attic. Yeah, so it's just a question of doing it at the right time yes. of the year. Yeah. Uh, quick word about the uh, mic and frequency, how it samples, what it is, it's a kind of interesting okay. process. So, we're good. before you start, can you come a little closer, like right there? <laughs> right there. Here? Yep. <clears throat> we're recording the echolocation calls of the bats here using what's known as a condenser microphone, which is a piece of aluminized mylar sitting across a machine surface of, of circular grooves. There's a polarizing voltage that means that when the sound waves hit the mylar, it causes them to hit the piece of the metal underneath, and that creates a, an electric signal. So it's taken an acoustic signal, the sound waves hitting the mylar, and turn it into an electrical signal, which is con in turn conveyed to the computer. Hmm. Um, using the program, th this is called Avasoft, which is a German product, uh, we can adjust the frequency at which the computer samples sound. So we're using tonight a 500 kilohertz sampling rate, which means that we can record sounds up to about 250 kilohertz, which is more than enough to deal with these bats. But there's other places, for example, in Africa, where the bats would be even higher frequency, you'd have to use a different setting. But for these bats, we could actually get away with a lower sampling rate, because most of what they say is between 40 and 30 kilohertz or 40 and 20 kilohertz. So humans theoretically can hear it to 20 kilohertz, but that's probably only true of, of small children. Most adults don't hear much above 10, and almost all of our conversation is below five. So you could be deaf to anything above five kilohertz and you wouldn't miss anything, people talking to one another. Um, bats use high frequency sounds in echolocation because high frequency sounds have a shorter wavelength which gives them more detailed information about their target than lower frequency sounds. Wonderful. Well, I'd like to see if we could get uh, the little video clip of... Okay, all right. And then... Uh, are you joking me again? No, nope, sorry. Bye, so, guys. one of the things that intrigues me, of course, is the faces of bats and what is the functional significance of it. And that may have something to do with echolocation of biosonar. But the other side of the story that's very interesting is the way people perceive bats. So, in the West Indies and in Central America, you find people portraying bats um, with rather great accuracy. This is a ghost-faced bat. It's a very distinctive face with nostrils that are sitting up on a, almost a turret. And if you go to um, Mayan country, in this case uh, Belize, here we have a Mayan pot from uh, 
an expedition, an excavation of their own, and we can look and we can see the turret-like nostrils and the very rounded ears and the decorations on the bat's face and the ears as they're represented by the Maya. If we go instead to uh, Tyronan people in Northern Colombia, we have a different representation, but I think it's of the same bat. In this case, it's more accurate. You find the same thing through the West Indies, for example, in Hispaniola. And the interesting thing is that these people are drawing bats, which are relatively small. So the size of the bat's head is less than the area that I'm showing here between you know, finger and thumb and forefinger. It's much more like that, a much smaller thing. And yet on these pots, but they're just but obviously neat. They're familiar with different kinds of bats. And so far, I haven't been able to find out why the Mayans do this bath for one thing and they do a different bath for something else. It just tells you they're much more in touch or they were much more in touch with the nature around them than we give them credit for. And this is very different from the Chinese situation where the baths are done in great profusion and there's positive symbols, but they're all very stylized and they really look like flying mice. There doesn't appear to be any effort by the part of the artist to accurately represent the bath. But these Mayans and the Tyronans they really knew their bats, and I'd like to know what was the significance. Okay. Jeez, he's good. Beautiful. Eh?